you see that gets torn on there.
creation. Ignite our spirits to worship you with sincerity. Even though she has been with us, 
for so many Sundays. But Lona is transferring her membership uh, from St. Paul United Methodist Church to become a member of our congregation. So welcome her by giving her and not only that, she'll be an intern. She's in the process to become a chaplain and deacon, deaconess. So she will be an intern for our church, and she's willing to learn as much as she could uh, during this time of not only a member of our congregation, but also uh, an intern to learn about how to do church. So welcome, and may God bless you in your discerning and your call to ministry. So, lead us with our children this morning. Good morning, children. Good morning. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about faith. That's in Hebrew. Good morning. Can you hear me better? Yes. Okay. This morning, we're going to talk about faith and action. It's in Hebrew, the 11th chapter, 1 through the 3rd verse. And you might say, children, what is faith? Faith is that we hope and we know in our heart that whatever the issue or the problem is, that God is going to handle it and that we trust. It doesn't matter if we can see it or if it makes sense. We just trust and we step out that God. So children, I want you to think about a yearbook. You know, every year there is a yearbook that comes out at school and the students' um, pictures are in. And those students that do special things, their pictures are in the front of the yearbook and they're much better, much bigger. But God has a yearbook too, a yearbook that he calls the Hall of Fame. And those are for the people that really had faith in him. And he also has a book that he collects all your tears when you cry, when you hurt, when you struggle. He keeps track of them too. So I want you to keep the yearbook in mind for just a second. And so I want to ask you a couple questions. When you hurt your sister and brother, is it hard for you to go to sleep at night? When you find out that a poor person in your neighborhood had a desire for this gift. And Christmas came and they received it. Do you feel, do you have a desire to go to school and play with other children, even though they may not be your face? So if your answer is yes, then watch your faith grow. Can you hear us talk about the size of a mustard seed? A mustard seed is the smallest, smallest seed, but it can grow to be one of the biggest trees. So, if you want to see your faith grow, and it's a teeny, teeny little seed, you want it to grow bigger and bigger, then what you need to do is step out. Did you know faith is not about being perfect? Faith is just about continuously to trust in God. People in the Bible weren't perfect, and neither were you. In Genesis 17, Sarah and Abraham put their faith in the action. They trusted God. God told them to go to a new land and leave all their friends and family. And they trusted. He also told them he was going to give them a baby in their old age. And they laughed at him. And during their journey to their new land, they also did a lot of bad stuff. They lied, they bargained, they did all kinds of things. But God was still faithful. God is faithful to us, even when we make mistakes. God will still step out and keep his word. God shows up stronger when we need him. And what we have to do as Christians is learn how to turn our desire to be in control of stuff over to Jesus because when we take control, we mess everything up. And then God has to come and rescue us. And things, you know, we just mess God's program of his 
is perfect up for us, and then everybody that is around us, you know, suffer also. So we have to think about when we don't do what God has asked us to do, the problems that we can create in our lives. So we need to step out in obedience to God, wait on God, and this doesn't determine who we are. All it does is help us to develop into the person that he wants us to be so that we can be happy and make this our purpose for our life. So that's the right. Jesus, I will trust you. I want your plan for my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's begin with those who celebrated their birthday this week, whose birthday celebrated in the month of August, or any blessing that you have you want to share with being here for 60 years on September 11th. Uh, congratulations. Thanks be to God. Of your Holy Spirit. 
through the words that we hear from reading of the Bible, through the hymns and songs that we sing, that we connect it to you, O oh Lord, to remind us of your ever-presence and everlasting love. O oh Lord, we come before you and lift up those who celebrate their birthday, that you bless them with many years of love and joy. We thank you for Elle and Chris as they celebrate their 60th anniversary. Amen. We pray for Jacob and Rachel and as they um, endure health issues. We pray for your healing, comfort, and love. And for those that we hold so dearly in our hearts and our minds, oh Lord, we lift them up to you. For those who lost their loved one, we pray for your peace, comfort, and your presence. As we're moving forward to celebrate the 60th anniversary of this congregation that has been the light and the salt in this community and throughout the world, we pray, O oh God, for our congregation to continue to share the good news, good news and live our faith by serving our neighborhood and others. O oh Lord, hear our prayers as we lift up our young people, our children and our students to you, O oh Lord, as they prepare to return to the classroom. We pray for the teachers. We pray for the school that they find um, this time of rest as they prepare to school. May your wisdom and knowledge lead each and every person, every child. Protect them, O oh Lord, uh, as they learn and they develop their skills and their talents as you gift them, each and every one of them, O oh Lord. May the school a place of safety, a place where they go and learn while they grow in your love and your protection, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, come. Lead us today in our worship. For those who are watching, oh God, on live stream, that you may reach out and touch them in such a way that they know you are with them as well. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray for our nation. We pray for the leaders of this community, the city, the county, the state, the United States, and throughout the world. They'll, when they may decision that they seek you first, O oh Lord, and your wisdom for your creator that you created this world and let there be peace and it shall begin within us. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his life for the forgiveness of our sin. Therefore, we surrender our all with our faith and trust in him as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants who master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready. Even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak, but understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the people of God.
words of do not fear. Those three words, do not fear. 367. So what does that mean to all of us? That it is God's hope and God's love for each and every one of us. That we do not fear, do not be afraid. And the verse 32 says, for your father has been pleased to give us his kingdom. So often that we live in a world that changing at all times. And we're always worried and fear what will come tomorrow. We do not know what we will be. We fear when we watch the news, the uncertainty of life. We fear because of rejection, of loneliness, of failure. We fear of change. And when fear comes, it's hard for us to live our life and know that there is great opportunity that might, might come in our way because we fear of ever change. We fear of failure. We fear of uncertainty or something might happen of getting hurt, of people judging us, and so many things that happen in our world that we're not able to avoid that fear and concerns and worry in us. And that is part of who we are. But in verse 32, the Bible said, and Jesus said, do not be afraid, fear not, because God knows what you need. God knows who you are, for God is our creator, and he created each and every one of us in his image. And it is his pleasure to give us his kingdom, his kingdom that he promised to each and every one of us, that those who have faith in Jesus Christ, and what is faith? Faith is believing and assuring of things that we hope for, things that we may not see as of today, but we know deep in our hearts and believing in God that that things or that blessing, that great opportunity will come. But we must live our life trusting in the Lord. The closing key today, trust and obey. Yes, we trust our parents. We trust our elders.
that he share his body and his blood for forgiveness of our sin. So I invite you to take your cup.